The world presented in speech glorifies God. And so we should let the world disclose itself accurately and eloquently. Language arts, words are about truth after all. Students in our schools should be habituated to a further consideration of how the parts of the world that are disclosed, whether it be when they deal with language from diagramming sentences, or whether it be in reading the poetry of Dante. They should be aware that the world that is so disclosed to them fits into the whole of God's creation. Students in our schools should be equipped and then called upon to engage with classic texts which display the strategic distinctions of our community's wisdom, the inheritance of our culture, which is what we seek to pass on in our schools. Our students should not be allowed to fall prey to the contemporary misunderstanding that Western culture has nothing more to offer in an age of technological postmodernism. Such a view would hold that the narrative of human life and dignity, held fast by countless generations of our forebearers, is now meaningless, and that the only narrative worth considering is the uninterrupted advance of technology, which produces an endless stream of tools of productivity, convenience, and comfort. Now, uh, something about uh, a measure of assessment in regard to the sciences. In the sciences, we must be sure that our students leave our schools with an understanding that the order discovered by science is guaranteed by God's authorship of the creation they study scientifically. Science is not an enemy, enemy of religion, but rather leads, when done properly, to a deeper piety and to the glorification of God. To recap what I said earlier, faith and science are complementary, and we need to help our students not only to parrot this truth, but to understand it so that they can defend it. In the area of catechesis, we want to form young Catholic men and women who can offer to their society the church's confession of faith and who are able to articulate that faith in persuasive terms. Our catechesis needs to be as intellectually rigorous as the most rigorous elements in our curricula. Our students are very, very bright. They're engaged in advanced placement courses, in calculus, in other forms of science, in letters. They should have a religious formation that is of equal challenge. Otherwise, they're going to think that it isn't really important. And we have the resources for this. We are the inheritors of a tradition that presents the confession of Jesus Christ in a way that is even more brilliant and more intellectually challenging than, uh, than physics, than theoretical physics. As I've already implied, our catechesis also needs to be in harmony with the other academic disciplines so that together our students will be able to see the intellectual life as a coherent whole. Now, not that the intellectual life substitutes for the personal adhesion to Christ, but as Pope Benedict has said so frequently, if the faith is presented without illumination by reason, it will quickly be abandoned as a mere sentimentality. In athletics and other extracurricular activities, we need to seize upon the natural enthusiasm of our students and their families for these activities and to foster them as schools of virtue. Sports, in a particular way, but also other extracurricular activities provide a significant analog for moral action. And we cannot afford to lose these opportunities to inculcate the Christian way of life. 